Now, for the next couple effects, the render effect especially, I need a blank layer. So what I'm going to do is just add a blank layer on and move it up here. Turn these other ones off. You can see that rendering effects don't necessarily depend on what's already there. So cloud effect, not surprisingly, makes clouds. And you can apply it all sorts of different ways uh, at the moment. It doesn't have anything to work with, so it kind of looks the same. Uh, the next rendering effect is a Julia fractal. And fractals are basically ever-repeating patterns. And so you can render them large. You can render them small. You can render the quality different ways. Uh, fractals are just interesting patterns. You probably wouldn't use it on a regular photo unless you wanted it for a background. And then the next rendering of effect is called the Mandelbrot fractal, just a very specific kind of fractal. Again, ever, ever repeating patterns. If you zoom in on those, they will forever repeat, forever multiply. Again, perhaps for a background you would use that. You can invert the colors on this. You can adjust the quality, the zoom, the factor. Again, just adds different details. Now, as far as stylizing, we need to go back to a picture for this. And for this effect, we're going to do edge detect. Kind of finds the edges, and it's a pretty extreme effect. It doesn't have a lot of room for adjusting. So it's almost like a it's a you would only use it in very specific purposes for maybe catching a if you wanted to have a logo with a muscular arm, you might use this effect to get the feel of that arm. If you want to use it on a fairly standard fo photography picture, I'll show you what happens when I run that. So if I do an edge detect here, it has a similar effect. I mean, you can see mostly what's going on, that it, there's some people sitting there smiling at you, but the truth is they look kind of freaky, so I'm not sure you'd want to use that for standard effects unless you're going for freaky looking. And back to the arm picture now with uh, the next effect is called emboss and a boss of course makes it look like it was stamped in metal or on paper and it has a very interesting effect you can adjust the angle of the emboss again very stylistic might use it for a logo a symbol depends on what your purpose is and then the next effect is called the outline effect. Similar. You can adjust the intensity of this, the thickness of that. I actually like this when you adjust the thickness of it. It has an interesting effect that makes it look very symbolic. It would make a great, uh, great logo if you were to add in some text into this. And last but not least is the relief effect. And the relief effect isn't all that dramatic. It just kind of puts that line along the edge and it almost makes it look like it's 3D in some aspects. And you can just adjust the angle that you're applying it at and see what happens. Well, those are all the basic effects in Paint.net. I will do another lesson on how to add different effects because there are literally thousands available. Thank you.